No, it's not an illusion. You're not seeing double. Well, you are, kind of. This is the Astor T25X 16-inch portable TV. This is part one of maybe several parts of a restoration, rebuild, um, hack, bodge, blow up, or whatever you want to call it. Um, yes, yeah, so this is a new restoration series on another Pi black and white TV. Um, very similar to the T25Y, which I just did up recently, as you can see. Um, it's not in bad shape. And look at that, it actually boasts transistorized, even it's, even it's only got about three transistors in it. So, a bit of a quick view of the front here. Um, I picked myself up a cheap, nasty tripod sort of stick thing. Um, so hopefully my future videos won't be as shaky. Um, it also makes it easier than trying to hold the phone with one hand. Well, trying to hold the corner of the phone with like one hand less, and now I've got an actual stick I can, I can sort of hang on to. The stupid thing, so it doesn't jiggle around too much. Well, that's, that's the theory anyway. Um, I got this one probably, oh, probably a long, uh, maybe a similar, similar, similar sort of time, time period to the, to the, to the other Pi. Um, I think I got for about five bucks at a garage sale and the guy said it was working, but I, 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 I may have plugged it in and tried it briefly back then. Um, I don't know what I got. I just, I can't remember. I don't even know, I don't even know if it even still goes. I have no idea. But today we'll find out whether it will, or whether it must go up in a cloud of smoke. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, the uh, the I've got the um, got this got this got the service information here. Um, just for those of you who 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 might be interested in looking at what some service info on this thing is, this is an actual this is, this has got the um, circuit diagram and everything in it as well. Um, oh, actually, before I do that, I'll actually show you the back cover. Which is this one here. Very plain, very plain, boring back cover. Nothing really much to look at. Got the um, two little hooks where the power cord winds around. Um, single antenna, which of course is now useless. Unless I had a, um, unless I had some kind of video sender or a blonder, blonder tongue modulator, something like that, that, that could transmit, um, transmit a signal around the place, but I just use direct direct antenna connection from my um, a VCR and um, DVD player, which seems to work. Um, so what have we got here? So I'll see where the oops, so where the where the um, three hundred ohm antenna connects to, and the back is the same as the other. the The, the back is the same as as the, as the other Pi two, exactly the same. Like I said, all these sets were all made very similar. Um, and there's our valve lineup. If the camera will focus, there we go. So we have it's pretty much the valve lineup there. And the 2SC370, 2SC455, and the 40240 are the three transistors in this thing. The rest of it's all valve. And basically, two the valve layout's pretty much the same as the other one as well. Basically, this one's actually slightly older. This is the, the X means it, the, 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 the X means it, it's it, it's a, it's a slightly older chassis, um, and I think the date inside this one here, I think I think it's dated around nineteen sixty eight, whereas the other one is nineteen sixty nine. So this one's slightly earlier. So look at the back there. And yet, amazing, yet amazingly, the thirty uh, eight HE seven sort of sits about there and the heat that comes off it makes you surprised that the actual the no the, the um cabinets don't the cabinets don't seem to well the ones I've come across is then the cabinet doesn't appear to be melted even on the other even on the other one as well. The back cover's not warped. I mean you can sort of see where the heat heat and the dust and the is all being sort of sucked in you can see the spots on the back that cover. Sort of looks a bit looks a bit um looks a bit cigarette nicotine tarnish so Judging by the discoloration of the back, maybe it spent its spent its time in a smoker's house, which could explain its slightly yellowy look on the front as well. And yeah, we did do badge engineering, so that Astor is just a pie. It's just the same, pretty much the same thing, just a bit of bit of badge engineering going on there. Um, uh, 
uh, excuse my voice, I've got a, I've had a slight sore throat and a bit of a loogie over the past couple of days, so <clears throat> seems to be coming right slowly, but uh, yeah, um, my throat, my, my voice might get get a bit hoarse from talking too much at the moment. Right, so here is a look at the service service data, data, if you want, however you want to pronounce it, for the Pi T25X. I think the T26, I think that was for the bigger tube size. Um, I know these sets did come out in a bigger screen size, probably 23 inch and maybe 25. Um, I could be wrong, but... Uh, so it just goes through giving the giving the search description of it. I mean, if you don't want to look at this, but just just skip it, just skip it on the video. I'm just sort of going through. Um, and if you're if you're interested, I have, do have a do have a back catalog do I do have a back catalog of videos going back seven years. Um, in fact, one of the first sets I did up was a Pi T22X, and I've got about a nine or ten part series on that. That was the first my that that, that was my first um, run of YouTube restoration videos I ever did. Um, so if you're interested, just scroll back through my old videos. Um, I'll, I'll see. I'll see if I can put a link um, in this to them in this video here. Um, but if not, just um, you yeah, just scroll back through. And um, I was actually watching some of those old videos, and you know, a lot of the stuff I've gone on about, I'm kind of repeating myself here because I've already said it like years ago. So um, like those bad resistors and the shitty capacitors and all the, the problems you think all the problems that these things seem to suffer with. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it there. Here's the tuner unit. Explaining how to align the tuner if you're replacing it. I'm guessing this is all pretty generic stuff anyway. And there's the circuit circuit diagram for the tuner as well. For those that are interested. Connections, oh yeah, trap your alum put HT, AGC heater, all that sort of stuff is all pretty much there as well. And then all the part numbers. Which of course no longer ex which of course no longer apply today. And this is the printed circuit board layout. This is quite good when you're when you're replacing components, you're not too sure where they are. You cross reference to the circuit and then go to the board and yeah there were actually a couple of there were, there were a couple of errors on the T25 one. Um, a couple of couple of components were actually marked wrong on the board and um had me scratching my head for a couple of minutes there and then, well hang on it's meant to be this meant to be 33k why is it reading 270 ohm? Oh that's stuffed up. But that's okay. These things happen all this and here's the circuit like I said if you're not interested just skip this bit here uh, come on thank you this is the tuning unit and your first vision IF EF 183 look semiconductor a little horrible transistor second vision IF 40 40 long video amplifier uh, 6kV, I think that's ECL84, I think. And there's your picture tube down there, which is a. Oh, there's actually quite a few there, actually. There's a 12RVEP4, a 16RVEP4, and a 19RVEP4. So, guessing that being 16, it's probably a 16RVEP4. Uh, so, down here. Which is, what's this alternative HT power supply? That's interesting. They've got two diagrams for the power supply. Hmm, interesting. So, the vertical. There's your yoke, the, the, the vertical coil for the yoke there. ECL85. There's your, there's your vertical output and the vertical oscillator. There's your sync splitter. And another transistor. 
into EC370 and sync separator and noise gate and AGC control. Uh, okay, the third transistors in the IF, sound IF, and the sound detector 60T6. I've got heaps of those. And then uh, so it's easy lady for ah, so they use the ah, okay, 6KV8 was wrong. Sorry, they used the pentode half of the sorry, 6DX8. So they use a pentode half of the SL84 to drive the audio stage and the the uh, triode half as part of the AGC. And as I said, I don't know what circuit. This is based on whether it's an Aussie design or an American design, or or this is a or whether this is just a New Zealand design. I don't know. It could be a mixture of a could be a mixture of a mixture of the three. There's your discriminated, discriminated diodes there. ECF A two, your horizontal oscillator, and there's your horizontal output. Thirty eight HE seven output and efficiency diode. And one S2 DY87 for your EHT rectifier. Um, down here's all your, your typical waveforms and all and everything. Must say though, a nice laid out circuit. Easy to read, e easy, uh, easy, easy to understand. You've got voltages around all the pins, so if, you know if, if something's up, you can look to see if there's any any discrepancies or voltages being too high or too low. So yeah, nice and easy to read. And easy to follow. Oh, here's the pinouts too for the transistors as well. Um, but yeah, there you go. And it just folds up nice and neat like that. And you can just close it up. And this is where some of the places were. So there's Pi Limited, Ultimate Echo. And Geo Waller, there was the there was obviously the three obviously these were the th these were the three distributors and supplies for Pi and Aster and, and Ultimate. Wonder if I should um send them send 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 a, a letter to that address there saying I want I want a part number X Y Z for this thing. <laughs> I wonder if the address even exists these days. Probably does. Um, Auckland or Christchurch. So yeah, there you go. Printed in the Bay of Plenty Time, printed in the, by the Bay of Plenty Times, Durham Street, Tarawonga. For those of you who live in New Zealand, are probably very familiar with, with some of these names I've mentioned. And Parker's Radio um, is where I got a lot of this. I've got I've got banana boxes full of service data for all makes, models, or TVs, and most of my stuff's come from there. And when you're doing stuff like this, this is kind of you kind of need this. Um, and just just to diversify and tease you guys a little bit here is a early 1970s Sanyo solid state color TV um, I will do a video on this in, in sometime in the future this set does work but it does have some issues um, but yeah very very nice TV performs quite well when it works <laughs> so again this is this one here is for a future video right so what we'll do now is we'll swing this around Oh, dearie me. I don't think this one has actually seen as much use as the other one, as the T25. Because generally up here, generally up around here, um, generally up around here, normally you get really, really bad dry joints. Since all these valves are top of the board and heat rises. Um, but yeah, look, there's actually very little evidence of any work being done to this at all to be honest um, but over here we've got a rather sad looking capacitor um, yeah that's not a that's a bit of a telltale tell, tell sign that things aren't happy in the power supply department and when I do apply power to this I'll be doing it via the variac because I do not want any magic smoke to escape um, oh yeah there's been a repair there and once again, we've got the high quality crap resistors and the usual run of crappy old capacitors too. And I dare say that's probably leaky. Don't seem to have any problems with the, with the diodes. Though. The diodes seem to the diodes seem to actually hold their own. They don't seem to cause any problems. 
Um, but, you know, if there was a selenium rectifier on there, I'd definitely be changing it. So that would, would, would probably definitely give a problem or two. Um, there's a few wire wounds here too, ceramic, ceramic wire wound. I've never, these actually don't seem to give many problems. Neither do the, the ceramics, they seem to hold up okay. So mainly, it's mainly these, those, those, you know. Um, these are a different carbon composite type of resistor. These, these are better than these one, then these are better than those, but they still drift and give problems. Um, I was fiddling around the round before, and I think one of the wires did break off the tube next so tube. One of the wires broke off the one of the wires broke off the off the uh, pin there, off the terminal. And like I said, I'm probably repeating myself, I'm rambling, and waffling, but hey, that's just how my videos go. I just I said I don't rehearse these; they just all on the fly. Right, um, I think I did show this briefly in the previous restoration series anyway. As you can see here, there's not really much evidence of any work being done on it. The usual 1970s dust, and probably smokers nicotine as well. Um, oh, yeah, there's been, oh, yeah, there's been a couple of, a couple of, um, those have been changed. They've been changed. Oh yeah, that's been changed as well. Um, can't really see much else that's been replaced actually. Even this line apple transformer looks original too. Looks like it's never been out. Just looking at the soldering on, looking at the solder, the solder terminals on there, never been disturbed. What's that cat? Is it a duke on, is it? Yeah, it looks like a duke on. What have we got? 40, 16, 75. Yes, yeah, same as here. Again, very similar circuit to the other one. There's your mains transformer down there. There's your mains transformer. Um, that is your choke. I think. Yeah, that's vertical. And um, audio output transformer. Oh, yeah, there's the date there. There we go. 26th of May 1967. Oh, it's almost your birthday, this thing, at the end of, end of next month. Almost your birthday. And what we got in here? Okay, we've got a Mullard 16 NHAP4 is the picture tube. And I did bring in my um, leader. I'm going to actually, I'm actually going to test, test the tube, see if it's any good. Um, and there's a high qual roller C type speaker. And down here is the tuner. And yeah, these valves are absolute pain in the backside to get out. You just you need to take that cover off, but you're trying to pull them out. It's a bit of a nightmare. You take the cover off and you get like a you get like a little, little plastic thing and try and lever them up. They're always fun. No gunji does under here. It looks alright, it looks all fairly clean under there, nothing, nothing too serious looking. As I said, I don't think this set has seen as much hours as the other one. Um, to be honest, that one's, actually, that one's actually sitting over here actually. And I've been using it and it's been running fine, no issues at all. So um, yeah, it's been, been behaving itself. No real teeth and issues. I've been been watching it as I've been sorting out my circuits and, and into my into my filing cabinets on the odd evening for you know for a couple of hours at a time. Even the kids came out and watched watched it the other weekend and watched watching cartoons on it. And yeah, I see it's running quite well. So yeah, that's pretty much what well, I've pretty much covered it. Pretty much covered 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 all this. Not really much more to see actually. Uh, a couple of people, have, couple of people have actually commented on, on, on a couple of forums that I've posted on that uh, they, they're finding these tubes actually to be quite unusual for for um kind of, some of these people have commented that, 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 that these tubes aren't that common, especially in um, English TVs. I think there was one brand that did use them, but yeah, and amazingly too, even though that socket's quite discoloured, it's not tracking, it's not breaking down. I've never had these sockets actually give problems at all. So whatever they're made of. It's not, it's not ceramic, it's obviously Bakelite of some kind, but no, I've never had them give any problems at all, so 
must have done something right when they whatever whatever compound they used must be heat resistant and must be fairly well insulated where whatever it is yeah look at all these bloody horrible things yuck 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 oh i'm gonna have to change gonna have to check and gonna have to check and change all these all gonna have to come out and get replaced more than likely especially those oh hang on here we go looks like these transistors have been replaced oh yeah Yep, typical. Just chop the legs off and take, take the new one on top rather than actually spending time taking the old one off the board. That sort of thing really annoys me because I don't do that. I just... Just... Just annoys me. Bloody laziness. What's that down there? What's that? What is that? What's oh, a diode? Oh, okay. Interesting. All right, um, I will just go and get my picture tube tester, which is up here. I'll just sit you down for a second. I'll probably actually probably should do this while we now. Let's just pull. Oh, I've got to plug it into. Right. Uh, plug the thing in. Bring it down without dropping it on the chassis and breaking the picture tube at the same time, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> right. Okay, unplug it. And, uh, where are we? Interesting, interesting array of wires and plugs off this, off this one adapter here. You've got the, you've got the color ones, and then you've got, if there's no socket available, you just hook the cro crocodile Crocodile clips the appropriate pins on the back of the tube, and off you go. Right, try and get this on without breaking anything. Come on, play nice, there we go. Put that there. Right, let's see what this thing does. It has been bloody ages since I've used this. Right, how do we operate this thing? Uh, it would help if we turn the power on. Just heater. Ha! <laughs> look at look at the neon pulsating or flickering. Because it's not. It's actually looking looking at it, not looking at it through the camera. It's fine. But uh, look at that. Huh. That's quite a case there. And I will say too that some um, year compared to my old Panasonic video camera. The Samsung A5 does really good videos. It's a far better camera in every single way. And mind you, technology has improved, considering how old that camera was. Yeah, when I got it as well. Okay, right, so let me see. Check for HK leakage. G1 leakage, no. Jeez. Most of the, as per the set up most of them seem to be around about 40 or 45 45 there's actually like a, there's actually a reference mark on the on there seems to be pretty much a standard place for setting the grid one voltage go away fluorose you've been a pain right let me see set cutoff voltage interesting no cutoff voltage why is that well, that could be why. That could be why. <laughs> would help if one actually set one. Would help if one actually gave the filament some voltage. We'll put it up at six volt, six volt, six point three. Yeah, that's mentions that that that's close enough. If, if, if the if the tube's a bit tired or a bit knackered, it'll it'll certainly read slightly lower on the emission side. Right. Yep. It's definitely, um, it's definitely, yep, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely lighting, which is a good sign. Okay, and then we'll go back and do those tests again. So we've got here, so HK leakage, no, 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 that's 45. Right, now we'll set the cutoff. Oh! Okay, that's a good sign. And I can almost guarantee we're going to have good emission. Well, there you go. Goes without saying. 
that's that's actually a good sign that the tube's good. Yeah, it seems to be climbing slowly. The reason that I don't really have any point in actually leaving that leaving 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 that on to cook actually. Wow, that's well, that's really good. Yep. Good sign and a good start. At least that's okay. <clears throat> Unplug that. Definitely unplug it. Uh, that up. Right. Now let the fun and games begin. Let's see if we can actually make this do anything. Will it go? Will it go? Will it go? About to find out. What we'll do that. We'll start by. Uh, Alright, we've got powers off and um, right. I'll turn I'll turn everything on over here. Turn my my VCR and things on with my RF modulator and anticipation it might might be able to get some picture on sound out of this thing if it even goes. Alright. Okay. <clears throat> Why is that not shut? Why is that not shutting properly? Maybe it's better. Right, what I might do, I might just monitor the um, power supply voltage initially. Sorry about this, guys. All right. Using my high qual Dick Smith multimeter, which, which on resistance readings does all sorts of strange things these days, and. Um, so I've got I've got another meter I use for checking resistors with this thing seems to jump around. Um, you know, it's funny. I've got really I've I've I've, I've got flukes and them and all sorts of really good gear at work, but for home, it's just all crap. I <laughs> well, mind you, suppose it adds to the character and the you know aesthetics of mucking around with old TVs. I do have an Avo somewhere, somewhere. It's probably still buried in a box. Okay, I might just give it um, give it about about 120 volts of AC. Uh, hang up, we're, right, we're on. Uh, let me see if we get any voltage here. Yep, I've got HT there. I think it's 155 and 100. And is it one fifty? I think it's one fifty or one. I think one fifty and one sixty five. I think are the two B plus rails. Let's go back and have a look quickly. Um, what have we got here? Come on, focus, you stupid thing. Oh, yeah, at one fifty and one sixty five, and that dodgy old cap that's been tacked on was on the four hundred UF. Um, side of the, of the uh, filter cap. I'll leave, it, I'll leave that open just in case I need to refer back to it if we get any life out of this thing. Um, oh, it's drawing some current now. Things are starting to warm up. Things are happening. Okay. Used to be no smoke or anything, <laughs> no burning smells. Right, let's give it a wee bit more. God, I wonder when this thing actually had the last had power on it. Hello, I hear something. I hear the vertical oscillator. Hmm. Hello, I hear something. I hear something going. I can hear something. Got any typical frame buzz coming out of this thing? Yep, I can 
hear that. Oh! Hello, hello. We have EHT. Well, that's promising. full mains or anything so it's yeah here's my crappy tripod stick thing that I'm using on my phone <laughs> seems to be doing the job quite well mmm mmm well well it proves that uh, everything well the vital definitely definitely shows that the uh, vitals vitals are working no smoke yet. Um, I should give it a wee bit more. Oh. Hmm. Should I? Shouldn't I? Let me check a few things. No, nothing appears to be getting hot. Give it a bit more. Give it a bit. Give it a bit more. And see what it does. Okay, well, that sh okay, that's enough to actually to see if I fed a signal into it, whether it will actually respond. Because generally there should be snow. There should be snow and a bit of static noise, but there's nothing. So, um, oh yeah, that's what it looked like, by the way. So, <laughs> those of you who are curious. Um... Not really that keen on showing myself on camera. I know some people are, but uh, ah, it doesn't really bother me either way, but still, just I'm a bit camera shy. All right, I reckon I'm gonna feed a signal, I'm gonna connect, connect the signal up to this and see what happens. That, not the way the whole thing's I say that filter cap stuff look the way the pitch is shaking and carrying on right what have we got here we got we got oh oh look at that there's life in them there's life in dose circuits. All right, let me just you know, let's press play on the. Uh... Oh, look at that! Nothing too bad. We've got a vertical height. We've got vertical hold. It's not great, but it's better than nothing. Uh, height. It's meant to be height. Not doing much. Uh, God, the linearity is a lot of poo too. So it's doing nothing. Yep, all those caps. Sorry, all those resistors will be stuffed, causing this problem. No doubt. And other things too. Do we have sound? Yep, we have sound. Of course, I can't play much more of that because it'll get it'll get flagged. I'll get a copyright flag from YouTube. Well, it's definitely, uh, definitely picture tube seems to be quite lively. It's quite. It's quite it's, yeah, I'd say we've got a whole bunch of 
we've got probably got weak valves, our tolerance resistors, you know, we've got a whole number of things. It's, it should be a bit better than that. And there should be more width too as well, which is interesting. Um, it appears to be. It's funny. I can bloody width with control could be could be wrong as well. Or something or something's out of alignment or adjustment, who knows? Um, right, we'll just check that out. It's not hot. Nope. Ooh. Looks like it's sweating. It looks all. Ugh. I don't trust that thing though. I wouldn't trust that as far as I could kick it, to be honest. Let's give it a bit more. A little bit more mains voltage. Yeah, it's, changed, it's, it's changed things. It's all the things a wee bit. What voltages do we have on there now? 150 and... Okay, we're still a wee bit low. But, um, I, can, I can hear the EHT hissing. I can hear the EHT hissing a wee bit. That's a bit better. Just, just the hold again. Well, certainly this is a good start. Definitely a good start. Very promising. All the vital signs are there and no smoke yet. Okay, that's a little bit manky. Yeah, something not quite right there either. It doesn't look particularly great. Just the hold, just the hold again. Uh, what AGC, what was it doing? Ah, ah, there, ah, there we go. Ah, that's better. There we go. That's a bit overloading there, down there. That's looking a bit better. That's looking a bit better. That's a bit better. A bit more, a bit more, a bit more um, contrast there. A bit more of a, a bit more of a brightness range as well. Yeah, wow, well, it's, it's definitely got a good tube, and you can see that. No, nothing wrong with the picture tube at all. The alignment seems wrong. It's all ghosting where it shouldn't be. It's again, it'll be a combination of just old, old bits, I'd say, just worn out parts. Yep, still got sound. Well, it's definitely. Oh yeah, as I've just said, promising start. Definitely a nice, a nice, um, nice baseline to start from. Everything's working. Wiggle, the, wiggle, wiggle these tuna, just wiggling the tuna valves. Yeah, it's typical. It's typical, typical crappy valves. That's about right. Uh, I don't know why that what's that what's not. I thought the picture, the whole picture would have been filled up actually by now, but it's, it's still you really can't get much out of the... What's the height control hard round to one side? Linearity control, sorry, linearity control. It's doing, it's doing things, but it's not doing things great. Adjustment that bloody pot could be that pot could be poked as well. Right, let's give it full mains and see what it does. All right, that's full mains now. That's full two thirty into it. Yeah, it's full full two thirty into it now. That bloody pot is for sure. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it's definitely a bit of, definitely a bit of, um, bit of, bit of ghosting there. Maybe some, maybe somebody's. Maybe somebody's pissed with the IF in this at some stage. Maybe it's been tweaked or broggled because it's, 
it's all right there, but then you've got a lot of then you then it's then it's off tune. If you tune it out, it's definitely a double image there. So I'll have to look into that and see what, see what see what see what's up with the alignment. Mind you, could be to do with the the state of the the state of the components too, or a quick valve or something. But no, that's that's none. Not not complaining at all about that. Yeah, that's how that filter caps. A bit dodgy though. Whoops, and again I'm looking at the screen, not through the camera, so. Yeah. But uh, no, I'm quite pleased actually, quite pleased. Yeah, I think that cap actually might be leaking a bit of, um... yeah, it looks like it's actually, yeah, now that cap's weeping a little bit of goo out of there. Probably not too happy about being powered up for the first time in 20 years. What have we got? Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. This would help me actually put the put the black probe in the bloody in the damn chassis of the thing. Black probe. And red probe. Should have. One was it 160, 150, 165? Yeah, that's that's close enough. Mind you, that cap's rated at um, 350, 300, 300 volts. So, ooh, that cap is actually getting slightly warm. Why am I not surprised at that? Needs to be running okay. Used to be doing no. She appears to be quite quite happy, all things considered. <laughs> Interesting. When you open and shut the chassis, it must be the transformer transformers. They obviously they're they're upsetting the yoke, upsetting the picture geometry. <laughs> Uh, the, the other one had the same problem as well, and I had to kind of adjust it. Had to kind of adjust it the best I can with the actual chassis up. So it's roughly in a similar place too, anyways. Oh, Causing me a bunch of issues, but yeah. Oh well, there you have it. Um, you can't really do or say much more. But uh, now I've got the lovely task of working my way through and changing com changing out resistors, checking capacitors, and all that lovely stuff that comes with restoring TVs. <clears throat> Alright, um, <coughs> my voice is starting to get hoarse now. So I'll finish up here until next time. I'm here. I will now start doing some work on this. Rightio, I'm done for now, so stay tuned for part two. Bye for now.